Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is Logic 301, month number three, Piano Arithmetic. In this video, we're going to take a look at what is a Zermelo universe. So, in class set theory, adding the axiom of infinity to a basic universe gives us a Zermelo universe. Since it has been a while since we covered all of these axioms, this video will serve as a quick refresher on the axioms we have included so far. There are several ways to formulate these basic axioms, so depending on the text, you may see different exact formulations. Zermelo set theory is often denoted as just Z. This formulation is equivalent to zermelo frankel set theory without the axiom of replacement. This particular formulation we're using is a feature of building set theory out of the von neumann bernays girdle or NBG class set theory. Let's take a look. So, before getting into the six axioms that define our basic universe, we need two axioms to help define what we mean by sets and classes the axiom of extensionality, and the axiom of separation. The axiom of extensionality is quite simple. If two sets or classes contain the same members, then they are identical. The axiom of separation is an axiom schema and therefore a little bit more complicated. Basically, it states that for any condition that is provided, a class exists such that all and only members of that class satisfy that condition. Check out our videos on these for more. Next up, the first axiom of the is that the universal class V is transitive. This means that all members of members of V are also members of V. Since all and only sets are members of V, this means that all members of sets are sets themselves. Another way to say this is to say that all sets, i.e. members of V, are also classes. In other words, subclasses of V. This is because if all members of a set are members of V, that set must be a class by definition because Classes are simply subsets of V. In other words, all sets are classes. Check out the video on Axiom 1 for more information. The second axiom states that the universal class is swelled. In other words, any subclass of a member of V is also a member of V. Or, in other words, all subsets of sets are also sets. Check out our video on swelled sets and Axiom 2 for more context on this. Axiom 3 is quite simple, and it bears some similarities to the first piano postulate. Axiom 3 claims that the null class is a member of the universal class and therefore a set. Similar to the first piano postulate, this is simple and intuitive statement, but it's a necessary first building block to construct everything else from. Check out our video on Axiom 3 for more. The fourth axiom is the pairing axiom. This states that for any two sets, A and B, the set of A and B is a set. This means that we can start combining sets. We can start building out bigger and bigger sets. With only axioms one through three, the universe could have simply been the class of the null set. With this axiom, the universe suddenly is infinite. The fifth axiom in set theory is the union axiom. It claims that the union of any set is also a set. In other words, this means that the set of the members of the members of any set are also a set themselves. Along with the pairing axiom, this means that the union of any two sets, i.e. the set that contains all members that are in either set, is also a set. And therefore, the successors of individual sets are sets as we talked about in the previous video. These are the axioms that we need to show that not just the null set is a set, but also all of its successors are sets, at least by our current definition of successorship. The last axiom we've added to our universe is the power axiom. This axiom claims that all power sets of sets are also sets. In other words, the power sets of all members of the universal class are sets themselves. Remember that a power class is a class of all subclasses of a given class. In other words, the power class is the class of all the different possible arrangements of the members of that class. Whew, that was a complicated statement. If you didn't understand, don't worry. Go check out our video on power sets, power classes. We have some great examples in there and go into this in a lot more detail. But this means that for all sets, the class of all their subsets is also a set. And finally, the most recent axiom that we added was the axiom of infinity. This is the axiom that allows us to do basic arithmetic. Basically, it states that the set of all natural numbers, defined as zero, the union of zero and the set of zero, one, the union of one and the set of one, two, etc., is a member of the universal class. Now that we have all the axioms that we need for piano arithmetic, we need to prove the piano postulates using the definitions we've provided of each of the three fundamental concepts to the piano postulates, zero, successorship, and the natural numbers. If you want a challenge, try proving the piano postulates yourself 
Now, you have all the building blocks you need, but I will warn you, the first one is easy to do. The next couple, somewhat easy to do. The fourth one is very, very hard to do. So, you might be advised, if you want to try something for a little bit of a challenge, try proving the first piano postulate on your own. If you want a gigantic challenge, try proving the fourth piano postulate on your own. Best of luck. But if you just want to follow along as we talk you through it, stay tuned for the next video. Up next, we're going to be giving a proof that zero is a natural number. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.